flow meter signal cable requirements. This presentation will attempt to explain the requirements for shielding and bonding of a flow meter signal cable and the importance of adhering to these requirements for reliable and accurate meter operation. In it I will try to explain in layman's terms the mechanics of the shielding, without going into great detail of the wave theory or mathematics behind these requirements and clarify some of the misunderstandings. It must be understood from the onset that noise can only be mitigated through careful shielding, rooting, bonding, and grounding of the system. Noise Types we need to understand the types of noise the transmitters have to deal with from external electromechanical sources in order to understand the installation restrictions. Static noise, occurs when an electrical field distorts the signal and can be mitigated using continuous foil shields which offer 100% shielding efficiency and appropriate grounding techniques. Magnetic noise, comes from large AC motors, transformers, and knife switches, and can set up current flows in opposition to the input. Common mode noise, results from current flowing between different potential grounds located at various points within a system. Cross stock, refers to the superimposing of the pulse DC or standard AC signals between two or more nearby wires or cables. Solving these issues requires a carefully engineered cable shielding and properly installed bonding system. This video will address electromagnetic interference. Properly connecting and operating our equipment using standard instrumentation practices will mitigate the other noise sources. Fields Electric fields occurs wherever a voltage is present. The strength of an electric field decreases rapidly as you move away from the source. Magnetic fields are created whenever there is a flow of electric current. As the amount of current flowing increases, the level of the magnetic field increases. Electric field strength is directly related to voltage. Reduces rapidly with distance from the source of the field can be screened effectively by objects is measured in units of volts per meter v slash m magnetic field strength is directly related to current reduces rapidly with distance from the source of the field unlike electric fields is not screened by objects is measured in terms of the magnetic flux density in gauze or micro tesla. Electromagnetic waves can be imagined as a self-propagating transverse oscillating wave of electric and magnetic fields. This 3D animation shows a plane linearly polarized wave propagating from left to right. The electric and magnetic fields in such a wave are in phase with each other, reaching minima and maxima together. Transmission Mechanisms Capacitive coupling is the transfer of energy within an electrical network or between distant networks by means of displacement current between circuits, induced by the electric field. Electromagnetic induction is the production of an electromotive force across an electrical conductor in a changing magnetic field. Radiated waves would be high frequencies and conduction would be coupled to the circuit resistively. We'll discuss the inductive and capacitive mechanisms. Power Lines Power transmission lines represent the greatest source of EMI to our equipment. Generally a contractor will not install our equipment in close proximity of overhead lines but often has no knowledge of buried transmission lines. Careful consideration should be taken when installing electromagnetic flow meters in close proximity to power lines. Maximizing the distance between the power lines and the meter is the best method of preventing EMI. Capacitive coupling 
the capacitive coupling is represented by the interaction of electrical fields between conductors. A conductor runs close to a disturbing noise source, captures this noise and relays it to another part of the victim circuit. The capacitance effect between two bodies with electrical loads, separated by a dielectric is called mutual capacitance effect. Capacitive coupled energy from a high voltage line is enough to light a fluorescing lamp. The effect of coupling can be seen in this video where simply moving the flow tube signal cable that causes the coupling to increase or decrease causing a shift in reading. Capacitive coupling In our case two cables running close to each other will exchange charge, generally into our signal lines causing inaccuracies and errors on the meter. Coiling cable is essentially creating an ideal coupling both capacitive and inductive, which results in inaccurate readings and false errors. Inductive coupling Installing meters in close proximity to motors and other meters will couple energy to the signal cables even though the cables may be shielded. Cable shields do not completely block EMI but simply mitigate it. Again distance from the source is a key factor here since the further away from the source the weaker the EMI. Flow tube output signal To understand the absolute requirement for reducing EMI you need to understand the signal that is produced by the electromagnetic flow sensor. What is the output range of the sensor? The sensor has a differential output. Its sensitivity is typically 150 microvolts per meters per second to 200 microvolts per meters per second. Since the excitation current alternates its direction, the sensor output signal amplitude doubles. For the flow rate measurement range of 0.5 meters per second to 15 meters per second, the sensor output signal amplitude ranges from 75 microvolts to approximately 4 millivolts to 6 millivolts. Switch and 3 and switch 1 and 4 alternate the constant current through sensor coils. The plot shows the sensor output signal when being excited with the constant current source and with fluid flowing through the sensor. The scope plot captured on the sensor output leads shows a very low level signal sitting on significant common mode voltage. The purple trace is for the positive electrode and the red trace is for the negative electrode. The pink trace is the math channel that subtracts the positive and negative electrodes. The average value of this math channel, increases with the velocity of the fluid in the flow tube. With this in consideration you will understand why accurate and organized wiring is essential for meter performance and accuracy. Shielding Schemes Passive Shielding Passive shielding simply use an earth grounding of a braided or foil jacket that protects the conductor from electromagnetic interference by providing a low impedance path to ground noise voltage can follow. Active shielding Active shielding employs an inverted feedback scheme to suppress noise. A simple explanation is that an inverted sample of the input signal is feedback to the cable shield to cancel out noise reaching the shield. Shielded cable types There are different types of shielded multi-conductor cables each providing different levels of shielding. Braided shielding provides between 60% to 95% whereas foil provides 100% coverage. Braid and foil not only offers 100% coverage but the best mechanical strength. Foil shields provide Protection at frequencies greater than 15 kHz. 100% coverage over core conductors. Lightweight Low cost Braid shields provide Protection at low frequencies, up to 15 kHz. 
EMINRFI resistance in power, control, and data applications. High physical strength. Multi shield, foil and braid, provide. Protection across entire frequency range. High physical strength. Ease of termination. Shielding electromagnetic interference. Electromagnetic energy is a wave and therefore acts as a wave. The incident electromagnetic wave hitting the shield has a portion that is transmitted and portion reflected. As shielding attenuation increases the amplitude of the transmitted wave decreases. This is what is meant by mitigating the EMI. The energy is not completely blocked rather it is decreased. The effectiveness of the shielding can be measured in dB. The lower the dB level the more the shielding will attenuate the EMI. This relationship is given by the equation below. Electromagnetic energy is also reflected back, which in our signal cables can cause problems when looping excess cable into a coil. Shielding electromagnetic Shielded cable performance this table gives a good rule of thumb values for shield systems and materials. In our installations we always recommend installing the cable in a grounded conductive conduit preferably steel. Effectiveness against magnetic fields is poor. For effective magnetic shielding, high permeability material must be used. From this table shield effectiveness can be estimated using the following values. Poor, less than 20 dB. Fair, 20 to 40 dB. Good, 40 to 60 dB. Excellent, greater than 60 dB. Passive shields and conduits must be grounded. Shield performance. The braided shields on our cables offer about a minus 20 dB attenuation for EMI or about 10 to 1. Routing this cable through a steel conduit adds an additional minus 60 dB of attenuation or roughly a 10,000 to 1 reduction of EMI. Shield Performance If a power line creates an average magnetic field of 5.9 milligauss, not an unusual strength, a conductor 40 feet away will have 0.1 microamps of current induced. An average input impedance for a flow meter is 5.6 kilo ohms. This would input 969 microvolts of noise into an unshielded conductor. Shield this noise with a minus 20 dB shield reduces this to 96.9 microvolts. Shielding with a steel conduit adds an additional minus 60 dB reduces this to 96.9 nanovolts. Example 1. This process master system was experiencing erratic reading and extreme inaccuracy. Exposing the signal wires beyond the recommended strip back lengths caused the meter's reaction. The sensor wiring was corrected to conform to our requirements and the meter began to perform accurately and steady. Example Example 2 This process master transmitter ran signal cable through a common conduit, violated the strip back length recommendations and coiled cable internally. All of these errors contributed to the erratic readings. Once the wiring was corrected the meter performed to the customer expectations with stability and accuracy. When the contractor replaced the sensor board and cable in this water master he put a field loop in the cable. Basically looping it around the sensor board. This coupled the signals in the cable to the signals on the sensor board inducing noise and causing erratic readings and false errors that shut down the meter. Dressing the strip back length properly and proper grounding of the shield stabilized the reading and corrected the inaccuracy. This contractor put a field loop inside the transmitter, 
crossing the signal cable over signal lines and power wires and coupling the cable signal to the signals in the electronics module when installed. This induced false errors that shut the meter down. Correcting the wiring in accordance to the installation instructions corrected the issue. The FSM4000 is a AC meter with extreme low conductivity sensitivity. This unit exhibited flow when there was no flow in the pipe. The sensor cable was improperly routed with other signal wires crossing the power and coil excitation wires. The customer was instructed to reroute the signal cables and the sensor cables in accordance with the installation instructions. Once powered up the meter was zeroed with a full pipe and no flow to resolve the issue. A contractor installed a water master with the transmitter above grade. Like most contractors they ordered an excessive length of cable from the factory fitted and potted. Instead of trimming the cable to length he coiled it and hung it with a coiled power cable for the sump pump. The meter was not only inaccurate and erratic under normal flow conditions but failed when the pump turned on. Simply trimming the excess cable length and connecting the transmitter in accordance with the installation instructions resolved both issues and the meter began to perform to the customer's expectations. Electricians are accustomed to routing power cables and wiring in wire trays and run signal cable the in the same fashion. These cables are from an array of 12 meters and experience instability and inaccuracy. These were also long cable runs to the flow sensor. The only resolution to this customer's issue would be to route each cable in its own steel conduit and eliminate the wire tray. In this installation of water master meters the customer not only coiled the cable inducing cross stock but laid it over two fluorescent lights. Routing the cable away from the lighting and uncoiling the cable resolved the erratic readings at no flow conditions. This is Cliff McEwen. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel for additions and updates. If you have any questions or comments please contact me at abbwarminsterflowguys at gmail.com.